Hello and thank you for joining us for the 6th Annual Global Summit on Kidney Disease Innovations. Vox Populi, the time is now to prevent and cure kidney diseases. The summit is hosted by American Association of Kidney Patients in partnership with our allies from the George Washington University School of Medicine and Health Sciences. My name is Vasundra Raghun and I am an AAKP International Ambassador from India. I am also a living kidney donor. I represent Kidney Warriors Foundation that mentors patients for better health and renal diet. Several books on real life instances of people with the disease have been published in the past. I'm a member of the AAKP since 2020. It allowed me to participate in actively in summits and gave me speaking opportunities that has helped me to do out my work in India. It gave me an understanding of AAKP's policy making initiatives. And I recognize, as does the world, that AAKP has been the leadership in this area. This year's summit, Vox Populi, was purposely and strategically chosen by AAKP for its historical meaning, voice of the people. I'm one of the people who has been chosen to raise my voice in support of greater care choice and innovation in kidney care. And I'm one of the voices demanding a change in the status quo kidney medicine. Over 850 million people across the world have kidney disease. The number is increasing at an estimated rate of five to 7% annually. Every year we lose thousands of innocent lives to preventable kidney issues and the lack of taxes to treatment. AAKP believes kidney disease is both a workforce and healthcare issue. The disease takes a devastating toll on human lives and livelihood. Most people understand that kidney disease left undetected and untreated can lead to premature death. But many are not aware that it impacts a person's dignity and ability to provide for themselves and their families. Kidney disease and outdated treatments can lead to unemployment underemployment, disability, and dependency. In 2019, AAKP declared the next 10 years the decade of the kidney. The time is now for kidney patient consumers, healthcare professionals, researchers, industry, and all the people of goodwill to unite and our voices and demand change. We are optimistic we can and will save more lives. But to do this, we must demand new screening guidelines and diagnostics, new biologics and new devices. Together we can manage and solve this glow growing global public health crisis. The time is now for elected and appointed leaders worldwide to listen to patient voices. Governments must remove the regulatory and payment barriers they create that in delay innovation, and prevent timely care access. If government fails to act, we must raise our voices and demand an end to negative government detriments of health. Make no mistake, every nation is impacted by kidney disease and millions are at risk. The optimistic news is that every person watching this program today can help those impacted by disease and make a difference within their own nation. Through AAKP Global, AAKP is educating patients, care partners, healthcare professionals, and policy leaders across the world on un unmet patient needs. Our annual Global Summit on Kidney Disease Innovations has helped put a human face on what is now the 10th leading cause of death based on da data from the World Health Organization. We have connected people across the globe in a common purpose larger than one person or nation. Together we have increased hope and optimism. So thank you for joining us. Your voice is the voice of the people and you can count on AAKP to keep amplifying throughout the world to create change. With that, I'm honored to serve as a moderator for our session entitled Alternatives 
to human organs, artificial, implantable, artificial wearable, and 3D printed kidneys. Prepare yourselves for an extraordinary session. Today, we are privileged to hear from remarkable individuals who are revolutionizing the field of transplantation. You will be inspired by the pioneering work that is happening. Our first presenter is an ally and cherished friend and supporter of AKP, as well as two-time Kidney X Prize winner, Dr. Shubo Roy. Dr. Roy is a professor at the University of California, San Francisco Department of Bioengineering and Therapeutic Sciences. He is also a founding member of the UCSF Pediatric Device Consortium, whose mission is to accelerate the development of innovative devices for children's health. The Dr. Roy is well known as technical director of the Kidney Project, a nationwide effort focused on creating a small surgically implanted freestanding bio-artificial kidney to treat kidney failure. He, along with Dr. William Fissell, medical director out, out of Van, Vanderbilt University, lead a team that is dedicated to making this technology a reality for kidney patients. AAKP announced our formal partnership and support of the Kidney Project in 2018 because we were impressed with Dr. Roy and Dr. Fussell and their commitment to the inclusion of patient insight data and patient lived experiences in their work. Without further ado, I turn the presentation over to Dr. Roy. Many thanks to you and to AAKP for hosting this event. My team and I from the Kidney Project are pleased to provide an update on our work towards building an implantable artificial kidney. So today I'll talk about the progress we've made over the years that includes a team from UC San Francisco, Vanderbilt, patient groups like the AAKP and other researchers both across the country and some from across the world who have been helping us over the last 10 years or so. Our vision is for a universal donor kidney that overcomes the scarcity barrier of transplant while providing its benefits. This device, an implantable bio-artificial kidney, is powered by blood pressure alone. No batteries or external connections needed. The device is a two-stage system that replicates the main functions of a kidney. The first stage, the hemofilter, is built from highly efficient semiconductor silicon membranes, which filter toxins from blood using the patient's blood pressure alone and without the need for blood thinners. The other main functions of the kidney is replicated by the second stage, a bioreactor that also uses silicon membranes to encapsulate growing renal tubule cells while protecting them from the patient's immune system. The bioartificial kidney is a compact device connected to blood vessels and to the bladder using a surgical procedure similar to kidney transplant. To miniaturize the bioartificial kidney, we use silicon semiconductor technology. As we can see from the development of cell phones and other microelectronics, silicon technology allows for extreme miniaturization of sophisticated systems while leveraging almost 75 years of reliable and cost-effective manufacturing. With silicon production techniques, we can now create nanoscale features comparable to sizes of biological components inside cells. Today, I'll provide an update from experiments that we conducted to advance the bioreactor component of the bioartificial kidney. This is the unit that houses the renal tubule cells. We wanted to test whether the features of the precisely engineered membranes will allow the bioreactor to provide immunoprotection, meaning no need for anti-rejection drugs and prevent the passage of cells and viruses between the patient and the device and the components inside it. In this experiment, we used human kidney cells inside our device prototype. As you can see, it was implanted into pigs, and to test our hypothesis, no immunosuppression was administered to the animals during or after surgery. Now, here are the results from our experiment. The images on the left and the graph in the middle show that the kidney cells inside the bioreactor were alive 
despite no immune suppression. On the right, the graph shows that the cells express the genetic markers of human kidney cells without any evidence of damage after implantation. This exciting data allows us to envision that the bioartificial kidney, once it's fully developed, should not require the patients to be treated with anti-rejection drugs. Next, we'll continue to build on these results and advance the bioreactor work by testing the prototypes for longer periods of time and evaluating the actual functionality of these cells. Thank you for allowing me to provide this update for the community. Let me thank those who have contributed to our work, both financially and otherwise, my team at The Kidney Project, and I am exceedingly grateful for that support. We also appreciate our partnership with AAKP and the support for creating artificial kidneys within this decade of the kidney. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Roy, for such a wonderful presentation. I have a few questions to pose to you. How does an artificial implantable kidney compare with a natural kidney? Thank you for that question. We designed the artificial kidney to replicate the native kidney. So it's got a filtration unit, very much like our own native kidneys, the function that dialysis tries to replicate, but it's coupled with another section that has contains kidney cells, something that dialysis does not. It replicates the functions of the kidney tubule. And these two units work in tandem to provide total renal replacement such that the patient is not have needed to connect to an external unit, can eat or drink freely, and overall gets treatment 24 seven. When do you feel this technology will be ready for human trials? That's an excellent question. We are doing the research and development to prove that our concept is feasible. To move this to human studies, we'll have to work very closely with manufacturing partners, as well as the FDA, to gather the data, build prototypes that we can then do control testing that's needed before the FDA will let us human studies. We're hopeful that by the end of the decade, given that this is the decade of the kidney, we'll be able to get to the patient community. Will I need to take immunosuppressant drugs after receiving an implantable kidney? Immune suppression drugs are critical whenever one gets a transplant organ. However, the immune suppression drugs have a number of adverse side effects. When we began to work on the design of the bioartificial kidney, one of our design criteria was how can we eliminate the need for immune suppression drugs or certainly minimize the amount that will be needed. The membranes we've developed serve as a barrier for the immune system of the patient to interact with the cells that are inside our device. This physical barrier prevents immune rejection. And what our experiment showed was by putting human kidney cells in a pig with the membrane barrier, we saw no evidence of rejection, a very promising sign that in the future we can avoid the need for any immune suppression even after implantation. And finally, what do you expect the lifespan of this implantable kidney to be? And are there any considerations for potential replacements in the future? Like any medical device, there's always the chance that there may be the need for a revision or parts uh, may not last forever. However, by working with the right engineering team, material scientists, surgeons, and nephrologists, we hope to make a permanent device similar to what pacemakers are today, similar to what heart valves are today. Being engineers and scientists, we can prepare that there still may be a failure. And in that case, we hope we'll have developed techniques to minimally, invasive, minimally invasively replace the components in our device or replace the whole device altogether. Again, Dr. Roy, thank you for being with us today. We appreciate your sharing with us the latest on the kidney project and what is needed for the patients.